Yeah, what do you think about the label of rebuilding for the Tennessee Titans? Oh. As somebody who's been, you know, obviously you've been with the boys now for seven years. We all understand the culture of of, of Rabel and what goes on inside those walls. Like, on the outside, it seems like it's a full-on rebuilding year for the Tennessee Titans. As somebody who's played for a long time and, and, you know, coming back, how do you feel about that? I don't think it's a rebuild at all. Um, I just think that, Certain things had to happen as far as certain cuts we had to make just this off season. And um, you know, it's funny, and I ain't trying to pivot off your talk but or off your question, but looking at the whole John Robinson deal, and um, and I feel like it's not really talked about enough. But like obviously this guy who drafted me and I defended him uh, like a mug because back in 2019, we went to the uh AFC championship game. Hell of leaving a run. that game, obviously that was a hell of a run. Leaving that that game and leaving that offseason, I felt like he said, and I feel like most pe- people pretty had the same sentiment as like, we have to get a consistent pass rush. Think about it, we'd had a really great pass rush. Think about the passes we had maybe in 2021 that we had then was able to, you know, Mahomes was out there running around doing all type of crazy stuff. That's Flex like, throwing us right before halftime. Mm-hmm. I feel that's like that's when we was like, okay, if we just had, because guys were hurt and Jeff Simmons was still coming to his own. We still had Jarrell, but we had interior guys, but we just didn't have the outside guys. So 2020, signed Vic Beasley. Obviously, that was a miss. We signed Clowney. That was a miss. But I feel like he tried his best to try to... He probably seen in his mind, like, I had the green light to probably build the best team I could possibly could build because our window is now. I got to try to win now. And I feel like from there, 2020, obviously, he had some misses, but then he signed Bud, and he kept trying to bring in more pieces, traded for Julio. And um, I think that's why I restructured because we got for Julio or whatever. But uh, got Julio in. Then 2021, you know, it happened the way it happened. We didn't win. And then you seen John in, in, in the combine, he's about to tear up because they asked him about whatever. Because that year, we'd have won a Super Bowl. Like, I 100% believe we'd have won a Super Bowl. We had destroyed the Chiefs at home. We'd had the Chiefs at home that year. And then we was going to have, obviously, play the Rams in the Super Bowl, which we destroyed the Rams on Sunday Night Football. That was that, that was it. And, uh, but yeah, just going back. And then, obviously, you know, this year, John gets, you know, gets fired or whatever. Because I think that from the, all the, the free agent signers that he made, some worked out, some of them didn't. And then a couple of the draft class were the injuries and things like that. So eventually, you know, we, and this is, you know, he got fired at the Eagles game. Cause honestly, being on the sideline at the Eagles game, it kind of felt like, man, all the injury, it kind of felt hopeless a little. Not hopeless, but it was like, we was literally on the sideline, like all the injuries we had. And I'm looking at the Eagles and I'm like, bro, they got some elite talent, bro. Mm-hmm. And it kind of felt like at, at a point, probably in the third quarter, it's like, bro, like, this is probably one of the only times I've probably played in a game in the NFL where I was like, this, like, I don't think we can really compete with this team right now. Like, like we're outmatched. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm just keeping it 100. I feel like, bro, we're getting outmatched right such now. Such a bad like, feeling. And it, I, don't, I don't even think it was like we was getting out coached. Honestly, that's what any coach going to say. We got our coach, we got our played, all that good stuff. But it yeah. was really like, damn, like, we're getting our ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. really felt like that. And then obviously John got fired, but... Uh, I'll always defend him because I feel like he tried to do what he could to try to, you know, go win a Super Bowl right now. And so, like you said, we talk about a new GM coming in and he's looking at the balance sheet. He's looking at, he's like, he had to make certain moves. But I also feel like he also, he obviously made other moves where he brought in some some other offensive linemen. Uh, Shazir, linebacker, you saw him before. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Uh, brought in Sean Murf- Murphy Button as a corner. I think he's going to be a really good player for us too. So, I know from the outside, it looks like, oh, we let go of all these guys and we didn't bring in some other big name players that, you know, obviously everybody wants to bring because that's that's what fans look at. They look at big name guys and we, yeah. we ain't signed nobody big. We done we didn't do anything to help out. Um, but we all know what Vrabel is about, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like Vrabel in his mindset, obviously, Vrabel was a guy that wasn't, you know, obviously he was an all-American in Ohio State and everything, but you look at his career path and just how you always had to grind it out. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, he was one of the boys and one of the guys in New England, but they had a lot of great players in that team, too. And he was always just that grinder. And I think that the type of culture that we have on this team, we talk about it all the time. Like, it don't really matter when you got drafted, how high, how much money you make, and all this other stuff. It's all about what you do when you get here. Mm-hmm. And just being around it for the, you know, the three days in minicamp, bro, like, it was very, very competitive. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of culture that you want. And honestly, personally, I wouldn't say I prefer, but I like to go in the year with everybody doubting us. Be like, oh, y'all just going to suck this shit. Because mm-hmm. it was like that for the longest us being on the team. What, what we always do, we until, always until very recently. overachieve. Exactly. Yeah. We always overachieve. And we kind of always, uh, I wouldn't say live the expectations, because the expectation that we was going to suck. But we obviously always over, overachieve. So 
I kind of feel that building up as far as just the mentality of the team, the culture of the team is that, you know, we're obviously going to be underdogs. Nobody's wishing us and, you know, saying we're going to win this. I remember 2019, the year we went to the AFC Championship game, who was the offseason darlings? It was the Cleveland Browns. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, bro, Cleveland Browns picked them in the Super Bowl. They're going to the Super Bowl. First game of the year, we destroyed them. So I just think that just the mentality of our team, it doesn't really matter when guys get drafted, how they got on the team, whether it's undrafted, whether we sign them during, it don't matter when we sign them. Like, it's all about what you do when you get here. And I think that guys like myself, Derek, Jeff, just the culture, the guys that we have, the best players practice the hardest. We work the hardest. We put in the most time. Everybody buys into that. So I don't think it matters about, because we all know, bro, if you're in the NFL, you're, you're talented. Mm-hmm. Like, we're all talented. You know what I'm saying? Like, some guys don't have the name. I was a guy that didn't have no name. I was a third round pick from Middle Tennessee State, and look where I am now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about what you, what you did before you was here. It's all about what you do when you get here and why you're here. So, um, I'm, I'm confident this year, honestly, bro. Like, and at the end of the day, I put it on my shoulders too. Like, like we're gonna be good this year. I had to play well. Yeah, the best players have to play well for us to be great. That's just the bottom line. So good verbalism, real talk. And but yeah. it's just real though. Like, yeah, it is. Gotta play well. Like, any year that we was really good, all our best players play great. And so you can't expect to be good and our best players don't play well. So for myself, for Derek and, and Jeff, we all have lofty goals personally. But as a team, you know what I'm saying, we have to carry this team because this team isn't going to go anywhere without its leaders. So that's my mentality.